Hey, Tiger fans, Ben Rosenbaum here for another edition of the Tiger Lacrosse Report. Uh, joined, as always, by the head coach of the Tigers, Sonia LaMonica. And uh, coach, uh, two games in very close back-to-back, -back, kind of having to get back to them. Uh, win against William & Mary, uh, a, a tough contest against Drexel. Starting with William & Mary, I mean, that offensive firepower, that's what we're used to seeing, and, and then some. I mean, Blair Perry was fantastic with seven goals. Um, just what you thought on that William & Mary game. Uh, first with with the way your offense performed oh sure yeah well I mean Mary was was definitely a strong showing for for us um, to be honest that we we really moved on from that game um, to turn around to to Drexel um, but yeah you know that was that was a solid effort and obviously we had some outstanding uh, some big time play from from Blair from Lindsay they really dominated the draw play and that carried over into the offensive end too. So um, over, overall it was a solid game. And I think we, we did a good job of having a stronger second half, um, which was a big emphasis that we've talked a bunch about before. Nikki Sliwak also had a great performance. I believe five goals for her in that game against yeah. the tribe. We've, we've talked ad nauseum about her scoring prowess and what she's able to yeah. bring to the table uh, yeah. physically on the field. But uh, as one of the older uh, players on the team. She is also a transfer. What has she done from a leadership standpoint and how, how valuable has she been just from that experience standpoint and helping the team kind of gel and, and get to know each other? Yeah, I, I think in general, the, the entire unit is doing a good job of that. They're pretty close knit. Um, so, you know, you see them having a, a good time and, and various classes interacting, whether it's a practice before or after practice. Um, you know, that, that's, that's the group we're working with this year that, that's really cool. And, and, you know, Nikki obviously had some established relationships with some of the players on our team formally. So that, that made the transition in general um, smoother. But yeah, Nikki's, um, you know, she's, she's just very coachable. She just continues to work, um, you know, in that particular game, you know, she was, um, she was struggling a little bit initially just on finishing her shots and sort of finding her rhythm, but it was really neat to see her sort of transition and overcome that personal battle um, and, and, you know, get on the eight meter and, and kind of take it to them and, and, and finish strong. Um, so that was, really great and just a sign of yeah that that experience the ability to overcome have the maturity to overcome sort of those setbacks in game that you know players go through um individually and for her to come out on top in that that was really great and a great example for her teammates so you, you take on direct oh you take on William and Mary and then just a very short turnaround to take on Drexel how do you manage something like that before we get to the Drexel game I'm just such a quick turnaround you go from playing and all of a sudden you're you're back right back at it just a, a couple days later yeah um i think it's always trying to find a balance between uh, you know mental and physical sort of rest recovery as well as prep time um, to make sure that we feel prepared in our process so yeah it can be challenging but it's nothing new our conference play has typically been that you know two games in three days so that's a good kind of warm-up for us as we head into sort of more of those double header weekends yeah, so then um, you hit the field against Drexel, a top 15 matchup between you and the Dragons. Um, and it's, it, Drexel jumped out early. They jumped out really early. Uh, obviously, we know how the game went. What's your early diagnosis of everything? Was it an energy thing? Was it, was it just Drexel out executing? How do you kind of just, you know, put your finger? Are you even able to, at this point, put a finger on it and say, like, you know, I think this is what kind of went wrong? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a it's a variety of, of things, right? It's never only one 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 thing. Um, I give credit first and foremost. So I thought Drexel played an outstanding game. You know, they really uh, came in, and um, I think initially, you know, it took them a little bit to get going. I felt like we sort of came out relatively strong. We did fairly well on the draws initially. We got a good early goal, um, and, and then they sort of responded. And um, yeah, you know, I think some numerous things and I think it's all connected whether it be on the defensive end um, you know trying to figure out how to slow down their prowess on offense um, and then obviously for us converting you know two goals in a first half is definitely not going to cut it um, so we've got to do a better job of, of executing our game plan and I think just um, you know reviewing some film up to this point um, it's clear to just see that we're not quite 
in the right positions. We're not quite executing the things that we're practicing. So somewhere that's being lost in translation a little bit from practice to game and, and figuring out how we, how we do a better job of that, really. I mean, we have to, we have to execute it in the game. That's really when it matters. So, um, you know, some of those factors are definitely, um, you know, upfront, the diagnosis and, um, yeah, you know, we've got a little bit of time here to sort of work through that and, you know, respond and be able to bounce back from, you know, a really tough, a tough loss. And I think, you know, across the stats, there's a lot of even stats, but at the end of the day, zero for 10 on eight meters, obviously, you know, we've got to do a better job of capitalizing. I thought Drexel's goalie had a great game. She was really good on those outside shots. So yeah, we've got to, we've got to do better on, on executing what we're executing in practice. And I was going to say, you kind of beat me to it. Statistically, you look at team stats across the board. You mentioned the free position, but it was, it was, there was a lot of even, uh, yeah. even statistics, except, you know, at the end of the day, the, the score, which is the ultimate statistic. Um, yes. A bright spot, Abby Mona comes off the yeah. bench, gives a spark. You get a hat trick out of her. That second half run, um, what was said at halftime uh, to kind of spark that run and, and get the Tigers going? You know, it was just clear to see we were rattled, whether it was our body language, our facial expressions. We obviously were a little frustrated at how um, our first half went. And it was kind of just about, like, shake it off. It's lacrosse. This isn't life and death. Like, just settle in and, and let's play Tiger lacrosse. So we, we kind of lost who we were. And, um, yeah, it w I think it was just a matter of taking some deep breaths, um, just coming back out and, and playing our game, you know, and, and instead of having a mindset of playing not to lose, we need to play to win. And, you know, I think that really showed um, they kind of, you know, like, yeah, that's right. And came out and responded really well. And, and obviously Drexel, you know, called timeouts and sort of um, were able to respond themselves. And, and, and that was kind of that tough part of the game. We, we really came within like three goals. We had another great um, look from Kerry Thornton that could have been, uh, two goals and yeah, you know, Drexel just, they really responded well. And um, we just didn't have answers at that point, even despite some further adjustments that we made in the game. So yeah, you know, I think just, we got a little bit mentally um, defeated and that showed physically in some areas and we'll be stronger. We'll, we'll learn from this and we'll bounce back and we'll respond. Um, and then last question, obviously a big one. Uh, upcoming JMU it's 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 a rivalry game it's you know I always feel like Towson JMU games both teams really get up for it um, uh, there's no love lost to put it to put it one way uh, how do you temper the emotions of playing a rival in down in Harrisonburg uh, and what are you expecting from from this game against the Dukes we temper it by focusing on us honestly Ben um, you know again we've just got to focus on sort of our preparation right now we've got to focus on um, you know, just our travel and making sure that our heads are where they need to be and, and then being ready to play in the moment and take one play at a time as we go. And, and um, you know, rivalries aside, it's a lacrosse game and, and it's a chance for us to really, I think, prove to ourselves that, you know, we are a great team and that um, Jamie is a great opponent to, to really um, come out and, and prove that to ourselves. So, yeah, we got to just reset and, and keep the focus on us and, and what we need to do a little better and what our strengths are and, and have confidence, draw confidence from that as well. All right, that'll do it for us today on the Tiger Lacrosse Report. Coach, thanks for joining us and good luck down in Harrisonburg. Thanks, Ben. Looking forward to it.